All right, this video is about finding trig ratios from any angle on the unit circle. Not just the basic angles that we talked about, but at any weird place on the unit circle, they give you two, a, a trig ratio, you should be able to find a third missing side and any other ratio they ask you for. So it'll make sense as we do this, but basically we're not using angles on the unit circle today. We're talking about all the random other ones, okay? All right, so steps to follow. The first thing you're going to do is draw a reference triangle in the correct quadrant. The problem is that you're going to tell you which quadrant to go in. But when you draw a reference triangle, it is a corner of a bow tie, if you will, okay? So here's my bow tie, and it's got four corners, right? And the, it, it centers at the origin. Notice that in quadrant one, it looks like this. Quadrant two is here, three is here, four is here. A couple things to know. They always hug the x-axis. Always, always, always. Lean on the x-axis. Never, ever, ever to the y. Always on the x. And theta is always by the origin. So it's in, in that corner. Okay, theta is always going to be in the origin when you draw your triangle. Then you want to make sure that your signs are correct for the quadrant, given the clues they give you. So remember this. In quadrant 1, x is positive, y's are positive. In quadrant 2, x's are negative, y's are positive. Quadrant three, x's are negative, y's are negative. Quadrant four, x's are positive, y's are negative. So you're going to use that to help you get the link, side links they give you correct with the correct signage. Then after you've done all that, then you can find the missing sides using Pythagorean theorem. Okay? So let's try one of these. Here we go. It says the sine of theta is negative three over five, and it's in quadrant four, and my goal is to find the secant of theta. So, first thing, I need to draw a reference triangle in the right quadrant. It's in quadrant four, so my triangle's going to be down here. Theta is at the origin. Then I'm going to label my sides. Sine, we know, because of Sokotoa, we know sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? So opposite side of theta is three. The hypotenuse is five. Now, one thing to, you've got to remember is there's a negative sign attached to this one. So that means either the top number is negative or the bottom. So let's think about this. There is a, the rule says hypotenuse is always going to be positive. So that means it can't be the 5. The 5 is not negative, so the 3 must be negative. And that makes sense because down here in quadrant 4, the y values, which is the vertical change, right? The y values are negative, so it should be negative. And whatever this is, whatever length this is, represents our x value, and it will be positive because it's in quadrant four. Now in order to find that side, I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to say five squared minus negative three squared equals whatever this side is squared. Why am I subtracting? Because I know the hypotenuse, I need the side, okay? So that's 25 minus negative three squared is a positive nine. That gives me 16 b squared. Now, when you take the square root of something, remember it's either positive or negative four. That will help you on some of these. You have to decide is it positive or negative 4. We already decided because it's in quadrant 4, the, it has to be positive. So we know it's going to be a positive 4. Now the goal is to find secant. Okay, If sine is opposite over hypotenuse, remember cosine was adjacent over hypotenuse, and secant's the reciprocal of cosine. So I'm just going to flip that over. It's the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. So now that I know those sides, I can answer this. The hypotenuse is 5. The adjacent side that we found is a positive 4. So this is my answer. Notice all the work it took to get there. A drawing, Pythagorean theorem, and knowing the correct ratios. Okay, I expect to see that on your work. Let's try another one. Cosine theta is negative 2 over 5. It's in quadrant 2, and I have to find the tangent. Draw my reference triangle right here, and theta is at the origin. Cosine, we know, is the opposite over the hypotenuse, okay? So, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. The adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side to theta is 2, the hypotenuse is a 5. Now, another negative sign, i got to figure out where does the negative sign go. Well, over here in quadrant 2, x's are uh, negative, y's are positive. So that means the x is negative. This one will be positive. Hypotenuse is always positive, okay? So I'm going to use... Pythagorean theorem to find that missing side. So 5 squared minus negative 
2 squared equals whatever b squared is. So 25 minus negative 2 squared is 4, gives me 21. That's b squared. So that means b is either is the square root of 21. All right. Plus or minus the square root of 21, but we decided over here since it's a uh, it's a y value and we're in quadrant two, we need a positive value. So it's going to be the positive square root of 21. All right. Now to find tangent, remember tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So let's look relative to our triangle. The tangent of theta, what's opposite theta? Well, positive square root of 21 over the adjacent side, which was negative 2. So my answer is negative square root of 21 over 2. Let's try another one. Tangent of theta is 1 third in quadrant 3. Find the cosecant. All right, quadrant 3, draw your triangle. Put theta at the origin. Now let's find our sides. Tangent, we know, is opposite over adjacent. So opposite theta is 1. The adjacent side is 3. Now, we're over here in quadrant 3, so let's think about it. What are our signs in quadrant 3? X's are negative, Y's are negative, right? So we got to make sure to put correct signs in there, even before I do Pythagorean theorem, because I've got to find the hypotenuse to get cosecant. So I've got to find pi hypotenuse, so I'm just going to do negative 3 squared plus negative 1 squared equals c squared. Negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 1 squared is 1. That's 10. That means c is plus or minus, positive or negative, square root of 10. Well, it's a hypotenuse, right? So it can't be negative, so it's going to be the positive square root of 10. Now, I know all three sides. So let's see, what is cosecant? Well, cosecant's the reciprocal of sine, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if I re flip it over, I get hypotenuse over the opposite side, and that's the two sides I need. So the cosecant of theta is the hypotenuse, which we found is the square root of 10, over the opposite side, which was negative 1. All right? So you could write this as negative square root of 10, and that works. Okay? Hope this makes sense, and I want you to stay with it. We'll do some more examples when you get to class, and hopefully you will have it down.